welcome to a comprehensive guide to Warframe. I'm going to be showing pretty much everything there is to do and everything that is about Warframe right now. So I guess let's get started. Up here we have, I, this is kind of a funny thing to start with, but I'm just going to, I'm going to be very uh, disorganized with what I've got here. Up here in the news, you know, what's really unique about this game is that it's very community based. It's got, um, you know, a lot of times there's contests for artists and musicians and whatever to make whatever they want for Warframe, so that's pretty cool, and they'll get give out uh, prizes of the uh, the uh, paid the pay to play the the you know the paid in-game currency, which is this thing. It's called platinum. You know, you pay five dollars, you get about seventy-five platinum, I believe. That's the going rate, and then this is the uh, free currency, just your typical uh, space sci-fi credits. So, yep, that's that. Um, your character has a, this is a mastery rank, mine is at 12 now because I have so much stuff. You upgrade your mastery rank by upgrade, I mean, uh, leveling up your equipment, which fills up this little bar, and then you take a special ninja dojo test to, uh, you know, um, bring this value up. Um, now, the actual gameplay, well, you start off with a Warframe. A Warframe is this handsome bastard right here. It's uh, basically a suit of armor. If you want to think of uh, a Warframe as like... There are multiple different kinds of Warframes, so if you want to conceptualize it well, you can think of it as like a having different flavors to Crisis's, the, the nano suit in Crisis. Each one has unique powers. This one is um, probably one of the weaker ones, but it's still my favorite because it's just fun and... Um, I pride myself on being able to do so much damage as a weak little Warframe. Uh, his name's Excalibur, or Excalibur Prime, because I bought a, an exclusive pack to, during the beginning of this. Um, I got some skins, and nice scarf, all this stuff. Got an automatic shotgun, pis dual pistols, because why would you ever use one pistol? That's stupid. And a giant battle axe, because that's my favorite kind of melee weapon. Now each one of these pe oh, and uh, I guess I should say, this is called a sentinel. I often refer to it as a squishy. I don't know why I did that. I guess because of the sounds that it likes to make while you're walking around doing stuff. Um, yeah, so this guy uh, attacks for you, and each each dif different uh, sentinel does has a different function. Some of them are for attack. Some are more defense oriented. This particular one takes um, snapshots of enemies to fill out a codex which is where you basically find any uh, in-game lore, um, which you pretty much won't find anywhere else in the game, which is kind of disappointing. But yeah, so that's what it is. He, uh, his weapon is he basically throws parts of himself in enemies. So anyway, um, the actual... Um, the way you power yourself up in this game is, you know, everything starts up as unranked and goes from z unranked to 30. At 30, you have your maximum... Uh, capacity for mods. Mods are what will uh, enable you to equip powers and upgrade certain specs of the weapon or Warframe. For example, here I have a maximum shield capacity mod, uh, an almost maximum health mod, and uh, whatever. These mods are their power, their strength is dictated by how much you've used the fusion mechanic, which is where you essentially sacrifice other mods in order to power up an existing one. When you do that, the um, the meter here basically fills up every time you go up a, a rank, and uh, the cost for it um, increases as well. The mod modding is pretty central to, well, it is central in order to uh, strengthen yourself as a player. Um, you take advantage of whatever base specs your equipment has, and then you uh, up whatever ones strategically and, and in whatever uh, you know way you would like to. Um, I prefer being a very fast, very strong kind of character, so I like uh, running into danger, so I have very high defense stuff here, but at the same time I like to really smash them with offense, so I have a power strength, and um, I guess that's more defense, and uh, and I like, like I said, moving really fast. So there's the rush mod that um, helps with uh, sprint speed and whatever. These are the four powers. I can sprint forward, do a slash type thing, slash dash. This is kind of a ninja blind kind of thing. Everybody, you know, uh, gets stunned. Um, 
is for just doing a giant ass ninja jump over everybody's head and this one shoots out spikes in every which direction and kind of pins everybody to the walls it's wonderful um, every Warframe has something called an Aura Mod, which uh, allows you to equip basically a team effect. So this one in particular uh, regenerates health for the whole team at a fixed rate. Now, uh, I was saying before that in order to make your mod stronger, you have to fuse them uh, once it loads up here. Uh, any one of these mods, of which I have hundreds and hundreds because I've been playing this for so long, um, you know, you can upgrade them from this basic black meter and their basic stats to something more. So just for example, I won't actually do it, but... Oh, it's gonna bug me with that. See? That meter fills up and then it goes to another bar and then the, the effect is greater and the cost goes up. So yeah, that's how fusion works. Um, let's see. Level 30, you can use something called Forma to return your Warframe or whatever piece of equipment down to unranked level, but you will uh, also gain the ability to put a polarity slot on. That's where you see this blue stuff coming in. There, are si Some of these slots have symbols which match up with symbols on the mod cards, and um, when you match them up, it cuts the cost of that mod in half. Or in the, uh, I won't get that complicated into all this stuff. This is probably, uh, you know, whatever. But I guess the point is really just that I'm a badass. So uh, yeah, the actual gameplay. Any new player will start off on Mercury at the level Terminus. After you beat Terminus, you beat you just go ahead with uh, learning all of these different types of um, what do you call it game modes. And as you, you know, uh, go to certain missions, it'll allow you to access new planets with new tile sets and everything like that. Um, but the thing is, like I was saying, uh, there's no, there's not much of a sense of progression. Like, yes, there's a boss here that you need to beat in order to get to Venus, for example. But now there's a boss here and you don't need to beat that to get to Earth. And um, this boss is, pr and both these bosses are pretty insignificant in terms of the story. Especially with the way that, you know, they'll just come back that if you kill them anyway. Uh, so, whatever. Um, also on this mission map, there are a good deal of extra things that players can do. Like, these are a new... These things are... Um, they're called Dark Sectors. And um, they are all about... You can get, like, extremely rare mods here. And... Uh, the thing is that clans and alliances, which are groups of clans that band together, can essentially impose tax rates on people who play on these Dark Sector missions. And that's what the big hubbub's been about so far. Um, so yeah, there's that. And then there's also, uh, if I zoom out, you see you'll always, you almost always have at least one alert going, which is, uh, let's see, where is this? That's this. Alerts are like extra, what do you call it, um, kind of stronger missions in order to get extra rewards, so it's nice if you're low on credits or whatever. Um, there's also infestations, there's a one, one faction called the Infested, basically some of that wonderful overdone zombie stuff, we just had to have a zombie type enemy in here, so yeah. Other than that, there's the Corpus and Grenier factions. These are the two primary warring factions of whatever. The Grenier are the cloned ones, really. I'm not sure if the Corpus ha rely on clones, but yeah, essentially the Grenier are like a militaristic uh, empire of whatever. They subjugate people, although we never see any evidence of that, so there's no emotional connection to anybody, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then the Corpus are basically, as their name sort of suggests, corporate... Uh, money-grubbing bastards, which I guess is supposed to, um, supposed to be attractive to the teenage demographic that I suppose this is sort of trying to gather. Um, so yeah, without further ado, oh, oh yeah, and, and, uh, with the infest, with those, you know, green missions and whatever, and the, the wars between these two factions that I just explained, uh, you can also get more rewards, as you can see here, with the battle pay at the bottom, uh, depending on which side you fight for five times in a row, you can get that reward. So if I wanted to, I could get some more credits. I don't really feel it right right now, though. Okay, so that's all the... That's pretty much... Oh, and Conclave is like a very underused, nobody gives a shit about uh, PvP feature. So, you know, whatever. 
Um, but yeah, to actually get into the gameplay, let's see. Um, I'd like to do something pretty quick. So, let's just go for that. I'm going to play on solo so that, uh, well, you can decide if it's whether I want to just show you my skills or whether you, I don't need to be uh, exposed as a really horrible player. But yeah, um, be patient with my graphics card because it does not like this game anymore ever since the fix I had to do back in October. Where um, it's uh, going to be a little bumpy. But I guess that'll be fixed this autumn. This is a new Warframe, by the way, one of the new Warframes they uh, basically bring out with every major update. I have them water-based, whatever. Um, yep. They always do this, they put a new loading screen with all the new stuff, new Sentinel skin, weapons, yada yada. Okay, here we go, I think. Come on. All right. And they're going slow as hell. Alright, there we go. So yeah, trying to keep the whole ninja thing, drop out of the ceiling, yep, so that's pretty cool. Eliminate all corpus threats. So I got my shotgun, fighting the corpus. Let's do this. Okay, so at any time you can have either your primary, your secondary, and now your melee weapon equipped. And um, you can do you can fight however you want. Um, the, what I really like, damn it, what I really like about this game, if my graphics card will keep up, is, um, the, the fluidity and the mobility of this combat. It's really fantastic and hilarious with the physics, so that's why I've been playing, you know, over a thousand hours of this game. Um, that guy... Um, every mission you start off not being detected by the enemy, and if now, if you wish to, you can complete a, a little puzzle to return the alarms back to normal so nobody knows you're there again. And uh, also, when you're detected, enemies can um, lock down doors and keep you trapped in an area until you complete one of those puzzles. It sounds kind of tedious, but honestly it's not. The puzzles are... you can accomplish them within five seconds. And, uh, they're, I don't know, they add, uh, like, a fun little hecticness to the game when you're trapped in a room and there's no oxygen, for example. Um, so yeah, most of the game is just kind of going through a level or a mission of any type and, uh, yeah, just navigating your way through whatever the objective is. This is an exterminate mission, so I'm just here to kill bad guys. Um... See my weapons, you know, they can't even stand against me. Let's see. There are, every tile set has these neato little niche, whatever uh, features to them. Some objects move. Some tile sets are better, uh, have certain uh, map features to them, like they'll be more sprawly or they'll be more linear. Um, some will offer better sniper vantage points, so you can kind of strategize before uh, going into a mission. Each mission is completely randomly generated, which is really cool. It's one of uh, Warframe's strengths. That's why I've been able to play so long. Because no, no mission feels exactly the same. It's not like replaying um, one of your typical AAA games where you know the mission is set in stone. Yep, yeah. yeah. explosive barrel. What game's complete without that? Let's show off some powers here. It's a slash dash. So that's, uh, yep. Radial blind. See that little smoke thing? I guess I just burned out their eyes. Off of the sensor. Like that. You can tell I really love my axe. So pistols, though. So yeah, you can shoot things while on the move. I'm not doing a good job right now. <laughs> but, screw it. Nope. As you can see on the map up there, red sec red parts of the map in an exterminate mission means there are bad guys there to kill, so excuse me one moment. Well, good job, Squishy. Um, Alright. 
So yeah, I really like how they, uh, you know, implement. They, they really uh, looked into the level design and, like, these vents, you know. Very, it, it, it gets a really good ninja feel to the game. There should be doors that lead to places, but when there's not, vents suffice. Pretty cool. Here's another one of my powers. No, I don't have enough energy. I'm just uh, my friends having uh, more mod that increases energy, so one moment. That's a piece of gear. It uh, regenerates energy and... Uh, health, ammo, whatever you might need. So yeah, here's my ultimate power. Shot out a whole bunch of uh, little little sword spike things pinned to the walls. Um, Alright. Uh, I could have picked a mission for Less dudes, but no matter. Now, some of these. Now, I know every room of this like the back of my hand, but um, it is quite possible to get lost in these. That's one, one slight problem with this game that a lot of players complain about. I'm usually pretty good with my sense of direction. See, my defense is ridiculously high. They just can't even. I can fling them across the room. I mean, come on, this is like the. This is like a wonderful. Uh, it's almost like a physics sandbox. It's. Sort of, oh, you can see the. Yeah. So I just got locked out, like I said. I've been locked in the room, so now I have to complete a short little puzzle. You can bypass these by buying those ciphers at the bottom. But I don't bother, because I can complete them really quickly. It might be useful when you're, uh, you know, choking out. So that's the last of the guys. And now, just like with pretty much every mission, except for defense, maybe, once the objective is completed, you simply sprint to the exit. I don't bother with looting, because looting in level is not terribly rewarding. You should fix that. Um, but oh well. By the way, here's my last thing I didn't show you, super jump pretty cool for some attacking and uh, escaping capabilities, whatever. Every mission pretty much ends with this, uh, what do you call it, um, you know, extraction point, steal their escape pods, get this nice mission shiny complete. view of your character Excellent work, Tenno. sitting in there. God, he's a um, I guess after this, I will show you a boss. Now, um, this game is free to play. Uh, you can acquire more or less anything by buying it from the market. You know, uh, as you can see, here's the platinum prices at the bottom if you want to just buy them outright. However, as an alternative, for example, you can purchase a blueprint for that weapon for credits. So that's where the free to play stuff comes in. You just need to gather up the resources. However, some, oops, some things require a little bit more than simply buying and building with resources. Warframes, especially, you can buy their blueprint. However, to actually build them, you need to seek out their parts, the blueprints for their individual parts in uh, missions with, um, you know, bosses and whatever. Um, I should pick a somewhat decent boss to show you, because, uh, you know what, I'll just do Mercury, because I don't feel like working too hard. This guy is Captain Commander Vor, or something like that, Captain Vor. And, um, yeah, he has super duper powers, which you'll see, and I'm going to obliterate him outright, because I'm just way too good at this game, and now watch me just having jinxed myself, and uh, I'll be right to my knees. Yeah. Here we are, we back in the same tile the set. And take them down. Do not let the target escape. I'm just gonna run in. Finish this. Keep moving. None of the scanners have detected you. Captain they, um, Moore has lived under suspicion of possessing a Roken technology that grants him power. Slash. Slash. He cannot Done. allow this. Get to his location and eliminate him. Yes, so you can see there's like a minimal story here, it's just kind of like this is what this guy does for his faction, what can you do, here's our reason for killing him, go kill the bad guy, please, yeah, 
It's kind of limited. You're on the sensors now. On the You've sensors. been detected. Please save me. Please save me and my overpowered shotgun. Oh, and the uh, factions each have their own uh, animation. Uh, not the factions, but the, the, the bosses, you know, they'll, they'll basically taunt you and act really cute with their, you know, stereotypical villain lines. I guess it's alright, but, you know, I guess I'm more of a moral story kind of guy. So. Grenade dominance is inevitable! I am totally not a cardboard cutout of a character! <laughs> Alright, I'm at the boss. Now, most times, each boss has a an ability to drop a piece of a Warframe, or in this guy's case, a special weapon. So, they each had their own intro videos. I totally understood that, bro. Ah, that kind of Alright. He's gonna be using Jedi Lightning and stuff on me, I guess if he... Wow, I just completely obliterated him, except he's now using his little generator shield. Friends. Whoa! That's strange. It's supposed to be dead right now. Oh well. So the bosses are, you know, th this is a fairly uninspired boss to be honest. I'm not really doing this game much justice with that, but, you know, whatever. Whoa! Ah! As you can see, this game is quite beautiful visually. Uh oh. And the shield's down. But I should be able to handle this. There he goes! Now. Yep. So here's one of the other... Well, there was one of the other enemy types. Heavy machine gun. I guess I should be glad that they lengthened that boss battle a little bit. It used to be really pathetic. Um, but yeah. So, yeah, to, in order to use the free-to-play, you need to beat bosses and gather up parts of their... of the Warframes that they drop. And they can be... it's a random chance which build, which uh, piece you'll get, and some pieces are more rare than others. This, um, it's, I guess, kind of good for, you know, encouraging gameplay instead of just buying everything and, you know, just getting bored of it in five minutes. Having you work for what you need is, uh, you know, really nice. But, um, I don't know, I still wish the bosses were a little bit more significant. Alright, next I think Target I'll down. show you... Assassination oh, good. I did get one of the pistol pieces. Not that I'll use it, but, eh. What the heck, nice to have it. Um, I suppose now I will use... I, will, I mean, I will show you the clan stuff, the more community-oriented kind of stuff. Um, I am the one of the warlords of my own clan. Every clan gets to build their own dojo. <sighs> Using resources that they pick up in-game. Um, this is where some of that level building um, you were talking about kind of takes place. It's uh, You can choose what rooms to put where uh, while in-game. Um, the dojo is really nice because there's a lot of uh, extra weapons that you can find in here. There's um, access to a trading kiosks so you can trade with other players for platinum. Usually for platinum, you can also trade for other items as well. Um, let's see, so yeah, this is the dojo, the starting room. I really don't know why they gave my character this horrible unarmed animation. I really don't like it, it's very strange. Whatever. Um, but as you can see, you know, much different art style, because this is the Tenno art style, I guess. Um, as you can see on the map, everything's very modular. You know, this is a research lab where you get some other Warframes. Um, new mechanic that's been added is this uh, rail. It's a solar rail thing. You, those dark sectors I mentioned earlier, which are for getting different mods, where you can 
uh, try to impose taxes. This is um, for where you can construct solar rails, which are what you use to impose those taxes. Um, I, I can start construction of a rail here for the Alliance. Uh, when the rail is under construction, this window opens up. You can see it being built. It's actually pretty cool, but I'm not going to do that right now because it's a severe drain on our resources. Maybe... You know what? Why not? I'll just go ahead and just... Oh, wait. I think I need to... I guess I would need to actually fund it if you were able to. Yeah, okay. Never mind. But yeah, so it opens up and you get to see the progress on it. Um, what am I doing? Uh, also in here there are rooms for sparring, for fun, with friends, just trying out new weapons and such. And, uh, yeah, I guess I should have just sprinted through the legs of that statue there. I should have actually looked at it. It's actually kind of cool. Um, there's some nice aesthetic rooms like this. This is our observatory. Yep, get to sit here and kneel at these pads. You may only kneel at the designated area and stare at the space from there. So yeah, there you have it. Very fancy skybox. Yeah, there's tons of stuff you can put into your dojo or whatever. I should mention, um, well, I guess this is pretty much all I can really say about the dojo. I mean, it's decorate some things, you can, um, you know, you, you, we actually have a pretty expansive dojo here, I don't know if I'm going to bother, should I bother exploring it? I'm kind of doing that. Elevators. stuff that's really cool is towards the bottom in our base, so that's kind of where I'm headed. I really hope the frame rate goes good on this. I mean, I'm seeing I'm getting like a stable 30, so that's good. That's good and unusual. So yeah, here we have an obstacle course. Usually pretty good. This is where you really, I guess I can show off some more of the ninja-y aspects to this game. running, as I think I might have shown before. Do some advanced of that stuff. Unfortunately, I think they missed out some on some good potential here. Um, the obstacle course is always this. There's no chance to customize it. Um, so there's no way I can make an obstacle course without this extremely annoying part. Looks like I'm doing okay so far. Usually I screw up miserably at this part. Uh, hey, looks like I did it. And I think I can just skip it. Yep. Fantastic. So yeah, they really try to get kind of a good ninja feeling into the game. Wow, I think that's the best I've ever done that. And, uh, dodge the lasers, except not really, because the collision's a bit off. Whatever. And we're at the end. A minute and 17 seconds. I'm not usually anywhere near that good. Um, let's see what else can I say about dojos? They really are very resource intensive. There's even um, this is a reactor room. You need to build a whole bunch of these just to have rooms be possible. They serve no purposes except to sit there and look pretty and uh, you know increase a value such that you can increase other values design there. Heavy sarcasm intended. If I had my music on, I could play these. You know, it's a fun little sound making things. They had a contest where you could uh, create a song with that. You can make yourself some nice Zen gardens, which are, you know, better, uh, better looking connectors than, um, you know, what you have normally in the modular whatever crud. Um, since our clan started off, you know, pretty much when this game became a public beta, um, we have a lot of old stuff, and the newer stuff is kind of near the bottom. There's 
one of the trading kiosks, but I can't really show you that too much because I don't have a partner here to demonstrate with me. Yeah, that's a uh, clan halls, which are these. I think they're probably the prettiest parts of the dojos, but um, quite empty too. They also increase another thing for for absolutely no reason. I don't understand why, but these clan halls increase another value that allows you to build more rooms. It really doesn't make any sense to me at all. But you know, whatever. So you have more gardens, and actually they've they've been working on their um, Zen garden art style. So this this is actually pretty cool. I have to hand it to them. They they did a pretty nice job here. Very spacey. In fact, forget what my room my teammate made looks like. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So they tried to go with the whole Japanese thing. To be honest, it's very loose. It kind of only appears in this do in the dojos kind of makes sense, I guess, but, um, yeah, otherwise, you have very clunky-looking Warframes that look like they have no business being ninjas. Um, I think this one's, this one I'm playing as is pretty good. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for the dojo. Now, in addition to the star map, which, um, has missions that are readily available once you unlock them, we also have uh, the Void, which requires keys that you find in-game, and um, and then you can travel to this sort of exclusive area. There are, there are actually a few tile sets that are only um, available like this, so yeah, I'll just do one of these to show it off. You'll get to see something else other than the Grenier Galleon, I mean the Grenier Mining Ship tile set, or whatever, so it'll be nice. Then I picked a much uh, quicker to do mission with the loadout I have equipped. So once it opens up, just get right to it. New animation for teleporting intradimensionally. So you are here there's some more of that potential for narr narrative uh, exploration. Not just intergalactic, but in Keep dimensions. Moving. None of the scanners have stuff. detected you. You can see this place is much shinier, much more pretty. Um, this is like the home of some uh, ancient race or whatever that uh, died out because of some of their creations. And now people who have uh, come here have been, uh, what's the word? I guess taken over by the technology hidden Target within these towers. Bring the yeah, this is a new game mode, by the way. You Capture, you hit Target people until they somehow perfect. don't die and fall on their asses so that you can pick them up. Go figure. Just kind of download them. Target you captured. Can... On to the next. I'm just skipping right past everything because, you know, don't want this to be too long. But I guess you have no problem with watching, watching uh, movies about game design, so no issue. This tile set is filled with traps. So if you step on a pressure plate like I just did, the gun will shoot at you. This uh, orb thing becomes its own trap. All depends on what you step on. I'm not giving enough, uh, this game enough credit for the diversity of, uh, Warframes or whatever, um, because I'm just, you know, not using my powers. That's kind of the way I play, honestly. Like, powers are nice, but I only use them in very, I conserve my energy. So, you know. Moving along. Target. So yes, in the void you can um, un ah. you can unlock d uh, pieces to extremely powerful weaponry. Like this shotgun I have, I actually had to do a bunch of uh, pieces. Um, usually you can uh, see what they are because they have these nice uh, golden um, I don't know pieces on them called prime weaponry. 
way to get up. <laughs> Not anymore. Uh. Leave me alone. So yeah, that's the well void. Done. Unfortunately, there's no boss here yet. I have a wonderful idea of a boss. But I don't think that uh, uh, DE, Middle Extremes, the developer, is interested in anything like it. I'm per I personally am a big fan of bosses that are huge and look intimidating. This game does very little of that. Okay, look, same escape pod, because that makes sense. Let's see what Mission I got. Complete. The More prime receiver. Well, that's the gun I'm using, point. so well done. I don't really need that part. I guess I can sell it. What the hell? <clears throat> um, I suppose the last mission I'll... What else can I explain? Um, I suppose I can go more into detail about the alliances and such. Um, the alliance is a fairly new feature. Um, it appears I'm the only one from it on from my clan online. Doesn't doesn't surprise me. Um, the alliance is a collection of clans. Our alliance is called the Nightmare Sovereigns. And we build uh, rails to deploy on those dark sectors. Everybody can contribute to them and whatever. And this provide what, what's really been uh, this has really been um, you know argued about on the forums because there's kind of a poor balancing issue here. Um, in this, less in the sense uh, maybe less in the sense between like experienced and non-experienced players more than uh, hardcore and casual. Because in order for anybody to compete in this sort of thing, you require you pretty much require a dedicated clan with dedicated members who will go out and farm resources and, and put them into uh, rails, whatnot. So, um, yeah. So there there are, there are some massive clans and massive alliances out there, and meanwhile our alliance is pretty small and. Most of our members don't really contribute, so we have a very hard time keeping our uh, influence over this map here. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, last thing I'd like to show you is a boss that hopefully I can beat. I will switch to a new loadout. Mm, yeah, that'll work. Um, I may die a couple times because he's actually fairly tough. Let's see, what do I give him again? Galatine. You'll get to see another one of the, um, oh, I guess you already saw the Corpus and Grenier, so I guess now you'll see the Infested. Let's get my different Sentinel. This is an attack Sentinel, by the way. Um, I'm really gearing up for defense and super, like super defense and offense right now, so. That's why I have this guy on here. This guy is kind of your tank, but um, with this prime version of him, he's much faster. So, yeah, you really get a sense when you play the game for uh, how many, um, like, like what's different between all the uh, Warframes and weapons. They did a good job of um, making weapons and stuff feel different. So we're heading into yet another tile set. This is the Orokin Derelict. Um, it looks quite a bit like the Void, except these are ships that were taken over by the Infested, which are that zombie faction I mentioned, because every game nowadays needs zombies. Um, kind of loud and annoying, so bear with me. So yeah, looks just like the Void, except very ruined, down. dark. Do not yeah. let the target escape. They did a pretty good. Um, Keep going. Nobody knows you're here. Ah, here's some of our lovely denizens now. That's alright. I'm hoping I can do this on stage so I embarrass myself. Hello! Woohoo! Gotta love them sawed off shotguns. Alright. That is the boss that I'm going to want to show you. I think it's probably the only boss really worth mentioning in this game, frankly. Um, oh, hey, this is actually a new room for the derelicts. Cool. That's not exactly the best. It doesn't hurt me. It probably does. Or maybe not. Out to these guys. Uh oh. I 
is uh, just for the exit. Unfathomably strong through centuries of I still know all these rooms like back of my hand. So. Get the last deal on that. Get this so like I said, the Grenier shtick is like, we are a super dominant, you know, military attack, you know, uh, 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 empire and shit. Corpus are like, we're here to make money. And the zombies, of course, are like, join us, join us. But it's very cheesy, whatever, and the backstory is not very well implemented, so I feel it kind of falls flat on the face. Ah, good. Please stop talking. Please. So yeah, this will be the first stage of the boss. As you can see, it's already a bit better than an old, crusty, uh, old, crusty near leader. Alright. I just gotta do some damage over time. Take a long time. I might. Have, I think I remember having better uh, success with that. Ah. Just gonna focus on one at a time because you know. Ah. ah. What did I just get hit by. Um. So yeah, I guess I should also mention in game, every mission you do, there are challenges you can complete for extra experience. Like uh, you might have saw the scene just before when I entered this room. Uh, swordsmen get a certain amount of melee kills. It's nice, you know, when you want to level up and it, you know, speeds you along. But again, it, the only real reason it really gets you to play this game is to acquire new equipment and then level it up. Which I feel could be expanded on. See, this, this kind of boss, I mean, already you can tell the scope is pretty awesome. Especially if I had my music on. Or rather, <laughs> Uh, little confession, I listen typically to the Metal Gear Rising soundtrack when playing this, because it just seems nice and appropriate. And, uh, really gives, you know, this the epicness it deserves. Really in this game, to be honest. Um, Doing fantastic, but ah! well, better than I could. Definitely better than I could be. Ah! Man. Uh, just in time. All right. Yeah, so I feel like this, in particular, could have a very big potential as an enemy, because it seems to be sort of the, how shall I say, maybe the king of this faction, if you will. Um, you know, just by its size, you get the sense that it's uh, a little more serious. Ah! And yet, its dialogue goes little farther than simply join us and oh my god, we're zombies and you know, love us or hate us or shoot us or something. Uh, I feel like, you know, considering that Tenno, you know, the uh, faction that your character is a part of, um, don't really have memories of what their origin is, I think it would be incredibly interesting if, for example, this boss expose some sort of information like that, even in a, in, even in a, a s silly sort of vague kind of way, it, I think it would really be a step up from what's been going on in this game so far. I'm, the only, uh, the only character in this game that sort of makes hints at that is, uh, this one random encounter you can have with a certain enemy called the Stalker. Another generic AAA enemy name. I'm sure you'll agree. Oh good, I can actually do some damage. Um, the Stalker 
is a Tenno like you that went rogue for reasons unknown. And he likes to attack players who have defeated certain bosses and claim that they require, uh, that they need to be punished for this crime. This would suggest to me, frankly, you know, only by very, uh, very, you know, extensive extrapolation can you really gather this, but, uh, wow, I just cannot stay on my feet today. Um, only by very extensive and forced extrap- God damn it! Very extensive and forced extrapolation can you gather that maybe your mission in the cosmos here is not as, uh, not innocent, but, um, you know, heroic as you may have previously thought. Another thing I wish that the difficulty was not almost entirely hinging on your ability to stay on your feet. Oh, but anyway, back to the story angle. Um, it kind of... Stalker is the only enemy that really gives you a sort of feeling like like maybe you've been led on by your, team, by your uh, head honcho, the Lotus. You always see this uh, you know, chick on the left who's telling you what's going on. Um, it's only only small hints like that at you know the overarching story, which I guess is kind of nice. I just wish that you know what is there was a little bit more apparent. Still doing good damage. Killed one of the heads. Seem to be a little friendly fire. But yeah, I would like to see a conspiracy type storyline, essentially, where where the Lotus has actually been leading us on because she's the only one who contacted us after our cryo sleep or whatever sci-fi ha shit happened um, and tells us all of our objectives and quote unquote why we need to do them even though she doesn't really. Um, so for all we know, I guess the story could have some more complexity. I would just like to see it up front. So yeah, this first part, you can see, maybe it's a little tedious. Come on, friend, open wide, open wide. By the way, this boss drops a very tactically useful Warframe, so if you want to get him without paying, you're going to need to fight this guy at least three times. As you can see, that's already kind of ridiculous. Alright, finally, first part completed. Now let's have some fun. The world is shaking. Oh no, what's happening? Oh no! <laughs> Here's actually where I really like it and why the Metal Gear Rising soundtrack is. Now, if that isn't an epic shot from the cover of a magazine. Alright. Okay, the only problem with this, I suppose, is that you're fighting essentially the same, the same boss again, really, in some ways. Um, and generally, this fight is a lot more hectic. I feel like they changed that somehow. But um, there's you know, parts of the floor that are electric, you know, 
very uh, electrically charged, so you gotta watch out. Your shield will be deleted very quickly. Ah, and of course the grunts still fight you from below. So that's fantastic. Oh, my shield just got off. I can be grateful though that um, they definitely go down a lot easier this time around. You know, when I'm not spending half the fight on my face. Come on, open up, open up. This has real potential, and the but if I, if I turned on the music, you'd be like, really? It's boring. Frankly, as I'm sure pretty much everybody... Ow! Jeez! Wow. Okay. I got sent across the map there. Oh, see, there's a notification for a new uh, alert, as well as my co-grandmaster. Um, message of the day. Uh-oh. Better turn on shield. that I called this, uh, ouch, boss, and saying that it, uh, that it resembles Dark Souls in a, in a funny way, because, um, my, the way my rhino is colored, I discovered recently, having started Dark Souls, kind of reminds me a lot of, uh, Solaire, and the boss is done, we were countless, consumers. and he's gone, fantastic, now for return home. Oh, oh, leave me alone. Target down. Assassination contract finishes. Great work, Tenno. Multiple targets ahead. Leave no one standing. So, yep, that was Lephantis. Probably the best boss they've made. Though it has its quirks. Um. And I feel like I've more or less covered everything there is to cover in this game. So they won't be bothering us anymore. Let's get out of here. And, uh, 